mine appear, and with actions brotherly speak my Lord's sincerity. Tender spirit, dwell with me. I myself will tender be. Shut my heart up like a flower in temptation's dark some hour. Open it when shines the sun, and is loved by fragrance own. Mighty spirit, dwell with me. I myself would mighty be, mighty, so as to prevail where unaided men must fail, ever by a mighty hope, pressing on and bearing up. Holy Spirit, dwell with me. I myself would holy be, separate from sin, I would choose and cherish all things good, and whatever I can be, give to him who gave me the
before the Sunday message today, we shall have a brief period of scripture reading. The Gospel according to St. Mark. The Gospel according to St. Mark. Chapter 3. Chapter 3. And he entered again into the synagogue, and there was a man there which had a withered hand. And they watched him whether he would heal him on the Sabbath day, that they might accuse him. And he saith unto the man which had the withered hand, Stand forth. And he saith unto them, Is it lawful to do good on the Sabbath days, or to do evil, to save life, or to kill? But they held their peace. And when he had looked round about on them with anger, being grieved for the hardness of their hearts, he saith unto the man, Stretch forth thine hand. And he stretched it out, and his hand was restored whole as the other. And the Pharisees went forth and straightway took counsel with the Herodians against him, how they might destroy him. But Jesus withdrew himself with his disciples to the sea, and a great multitude from Galilee followed him, and from Judea, and from Jerusalem, and from Idumea, and from beyond Jordan. And they about Tyre and Sidon, a great multitude, when they had heard what great things he did, came unto him. And he spake to his disciples that a small ship should wait on him because of the multitude, lest they should throng him. For he had healed many, insomuch that they pressed upon him for to touch him, as many as had plagues, and unclean spirits, when they saw him, fell down before him, and cried, saying, Thou art the Son of God. And he straightly charged them that they should not make him known. And he goeth up into a mountain, and calleth unto him whom he would. And they came unto him. And he ordained twelve that they should be with him, and that he might send them forth to preach, and to have power to heal sicknesses, and to cast out devils. And Simon he surnamed Peter, and James the son of Zebedee, and John the brother of James, and he surnamed them Boanerges, which is the sons of thunder, and Andrew, and Philip, and Bartholomew, and Matthew, and Thomas, and James the son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus, and Simon the Canaanite, and Judas Iscariot, which also betrayed him. And they went into an house. And the multitude cometh together again, so that they could not so much as eat bread. And when his friends heard of it, they went out to lay hold on him, for they said, He is beside himself. And the scribes which came down from Jerusalem said, He hath Beelzebub, and by the prince of the devils casteth he out devils. And he called them unto him, and said unto them in parables, How can Satan cast out Satan? And if a kingdom be divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house be divided against itself, that house cannot stand. And if Satan rise up against himself and be divided, he cannot stand, but hath an end. No man can enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods, except he will first bind the strong man, and then he will spoil his house. Verily I say unto you, All sins shall be forgiven unto the sons of men, and blasphemies wherewithsoever they shall blaspheme. But he that shall blaspheme against the Holy Ghost hath never forgiveness, but is in danger of eternal damnation. Because they said, He hath an unclean spirit. There came then his brethren and his mother, and standing without, sent unto him, calling him. And the multitude sat about him, and they said unto him, Behold, thy mother and thy brethren without seek for thee. And he answered them, saying, Who is my mother or my brethren? And he looked round about on them which sat about him, and said, Behold, my mother and my brethren. For whosoever shall do the will of God, the same is my brother and my sister and mother. Chapter 4 And he began again to teach by the seaside, and there was gathered unto him a great multitude, so that he entered into a ship and sat in the sea, and the whole multitude was by the sea on the land. And he taught them many things by parables, and said unto them in his doctrine, Hearken. Behold, there went out a sower to sow. And it came to pass, as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and the fowls of the air came and devoured it up. And some fell on stony ground, where it had not much earth, and immediately it sprang up, because it had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, it was scorched, and because it had no root, it withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no fruit. And other fell on good ground, and did yield fruit that sprang up and increased, and brought forth some thirty and some sixty, and some an hundred. 
And he said unto them, He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. And when he was alone, they that were about him with the twelve asked of him the parable. And he said unto them, Unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God, but unto them that are without all these things are done in parables, that seeing they may see and not perceive, and hearing they may hear and not understand, lest at any time they should be converted, and their sins should be forgiven them. And he said unto them, Know ye not this parable? And how then will ye know all parables? The sower soweth the word. And these are they by the wayside, where the word is sown. But when they have heard, Satan cometh immediately, and taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts. And these are they likewise which are sown on stony ground, who when they have heard the word immediately receive it with gladness, and have no root in themselves, and so endure but for a time. Afterward, when affliction or persecution ariseth for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. And these are they which are sown among thorns, such as hear the word, and the cares of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches, and the lusts of other things entering in, choke the word, and it becometh unfruitful. And these are they which are sown on good ground, such as hear the word, and receive it, and bring forth fruit, some thirtyfold, some sixty, and some an hundred. And he said unto them, Is a candle brought to be put under a bushel, or under a bed, and not to be set on a candlestick? For there is nothing hid which shall not be manifested, neither was anything kept secret, but that it should come abroad. If any man have ears to hear, let him hear. And he said unto them, Take heed what ye hear. With what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you, and unto you that hear shall more be given. For he that hath, to him shall be given and he that hath not from him shall be taken even that which he hath. And he said, So is the kingdom of God, as if a man should cast seed into the ground, and should sleep, and rise night and day, and the seed should spring and grow up, he knoweth not how. For the earth bringeth forth fruit of herself, first the blade, then the ear, after that the full corn in the ear. But when the fruit is brought forth, immediately he putteth in the sickle, because the harvest is come. And he said, Whereunto shall we liken the kingdom of God, or with what comparison shall we compare it? It is like a grain of mustard seed, which when it is sown in the earth is less than all the seeds that be in the earth. But when it is sown, it groweth up, and becometh greater than all herbs, and shooteth out great branches, so that the fowls of the air may lodge under the shadow of it. And with many such parables spake he the word unto them, as they were able to hear it. But without a parable spake he not unto them. And when they were alone, he expounded all things to his disciples. And the same day, when the even was come, he saith unto them, Let us pass over unto the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship. And there were also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind and the waves beat into the ship, so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. And they awake him, and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose, and rebuked the wind, and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? And they feared exceedingly, and said one to another, What manner of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? May God help us to be doers of the word. Amen.
has been so faithful to us. And you know what? Every effort to stop us has failed the past one year. Every effort to stop this global crusade has failed. And you know, every effort to stop our Father in the Lord, Pastor Dr. Dobia Kumuyi has failed. Hallelujah. And that's because we overcame by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. Hallelujah. I overcame. You overcame. And together, we overcame. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh. I overcame.
I overcame. You overcome. Yeah. We want the victory. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Tonight, great things will happen in your life. And there's a particular shop where I'm coming from. They say, come in, carry, go. And tonight, come in. I said, come in. Miracles are packaged, Amen. salvation, Amen. healing, Amen. deliverance. Amen. Come and carry on. Amen. Father, in Jesus' name, Amen. we thank you because you love us. You love everyone. And you are going to bless everyone. The power that never fails will work my children today in every life in jesus name Amen. salvation for everyone Amen. healing for everyone Amen. deliverance for everyone Amen. mighty mighty packages of signs and wonders Amen. for everyone that everyone will have their own portion Amen. they'll carry go back home Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. You can sit down. We have been talking about the power that never fails. We have spoken about the faith that never fails. The grace that never fails. The mercy that never fails. The name that never fails tonight. Is the word the word that never fails the word from heaven the word into our heart the word that affects our body the word that affects every area of our lives any way it comes we have the word that never fails tonight I'm talking to you on the mighty word with ever manifold wonders mighty word Powerful word, irresistible word, heaven sent word that comes to your life. And that word, the word of God, will never fail. It will accomplish whatever God has sent the word to do in your life. And tonight is your night. The word will enter your heart through your ears and then from your heart there, every part of your life, your spirit, your soul, your body, it will work on limited wonders in your life in Jesus' name. And look at Acts of the Apostles chapter 14. Acts chapter 14, we're looking at verse 3, long time, therefore a bold day speaking boldly in the Lord which gave testimony unto the word unto the word unto the word of his grace and granted signs and wonders to be done by their hands the word is central the word is mighty the word is essential. It's as the word enters that miracles, salvation, signs and wonders will be taking place in every life. Amen. Amen. Look at verse 7 there. In verse 7, and there they preached the gospel. They preached the gospel. Then in verse 8, it says, and there sat a certain man at Lystra, impotent in his feet, being a creeper from his mother's womb, 
who never had what? Then in verse 9, the same had Paul speak, he was speaking the word, who steadfastly beholding him and perceiving that he had faith to be healed. How did he have faith to be healed that day? The faith he didn't have the previous day, the previous week, the previous month, and the past years of his life. All those years, he didn't hear the word. But on the day he heard the word, faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. He heard the word, the word that cannot fail, the word that is unlimited, the word that works wonders and signs and healing and miracles. He heard the word from Paul, who steadfastly beholding him, perceived that he had faith to be healed. Look at verse 10. In verse 10, and said with a loud voice, Stand upright on thy feet. That's the word. Stand upright on thy feet. That's what I'm going to tell the lame man there today. Stand upright on your feet. You will rise up. That's what I'm going to tell the blind man tonight. Open your eyes and see. Those blind eyes will open. You will see. That's what I'm going to tell. That swelling in your body tonight. I say swelling. Come out. That swelling will come out. And when Paul the apostle said with a loud voice. Stand upright on thy feet. He leaped and he watched. It happened to him. It will happen to you. Yeah. The mighty word with ever manifold wonders. There are three things we're looking at. Number one, the mighty word of Christ, our Savior. Number two, the mighty works of the conqueror, our healer. Number three, the mighty wonders of the captain, our deliverer. Look at number one. Number one, the mighty word of Christ, our Savior. It says in Luke chapter 24, verse 19. Luke chapter 24, verse 19. And he said unto them, What things? And they said unto him, concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people. See the description of Christ there. That Christ is mighty, mighty in deed, deed, action, performance. Manifestation, demonstration, oppression of the power of God. Mighty. Every miracle he does is mighty. The deeds are mighty. And in your life tonight, mighty deed. Mighty miracle. Mighty manifestation. And then they said, and mighty in word. Mighty in word before God and mighty in word before the people. Every challenge they had, every problem they had, when Christ speaks, he didn't have to touch everyone. He didn't have to lay hands on everyone. Just the word. Because the words are mighty. In your life tonight, the words you are hearing, will be mighty. What's, what's mighty? What does that mean? Look at something here that we need to carry and you try. You cannot even lift it an inch. I try by my natural physical power. I cannot lift it an inch. And they want to they want to lift that big block slab. They want to lift it up and put it in the right place as they are building the bridge. But what man 
cannot do. The machine is mighty. The crane will just come there and without any effort. And the man that is operating the crane, he, he pushes a lever. He just sits down there. What you cannot carry, what I cannot carry, what no man can carry. Then the man sitting down there will press a button and it's like it's not even exercising any power. And the crane will go down and then lift up that slab that no man by natural strength can lift and the machine uh, it will just take that thing by the crane and put it right in the right place that's how mighty the power of god is what man cannot lift up what science cannot lift up, what engineering cannot lift up, what the wisdom of man cannot take away. Over here, I just press the button of the name of Jesus. I don't have to sweat, I don't have to shout, I don't have to do anything. And I say, in the name of Jesus, the button is pressed already. And then uh, that cancer in your life, that tuberculosis in your life, that hunch back there, that guilt there, that oppression there will be lifted up away from your life. Yeah. Tonight, I say tonight, that mighty word of the Lord, which man cannot take away, will be taken away from your life tonight in Jesus' name. Yeah. We're looking at Mark chapter 2, reading from verse 5. Mark chapter 2, verse 5, when Jesus saw their faith by what they had heard, what Christ had done for other people, they said, uh -uh, if he can do that, he'll do my own. If he can do that, he'll do your own. Because faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. That's why you are here tonight. Maybe you are not here all the nights, but you have heard what he did from Thursday and Friday and Saturday and Sunday because of that there is a positive expectation in your heart you know that those who came before today look at what he did for them now you have faith and you know the Lord is going to do it for you tonight he will forgive your sin it will change your life it will cleanse all the dirty dirty things in your mind and in your life because of the faith you have in him when jesus saw their faith he said unto the sick of the palsy son thy sins be forgiven thee finish one word your sins are forgiven your guilt is taken away condemnation is gone Think about that. All that you have done, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, many, many years, in one word, that guilt, that condemnation is taken away from you. And you say, son, he called him son. He called him now a child of God. Now you have become a daughter of God dignified daughter you become son of god thy sins be forgiven thee not only that he got forgiveness he didn't run away and say thank you jesus he couldn't even run away because they were carrying him four people carried him there look at that in verse 9 in verse 9 whether is it is there to say to the sick of the palsy, thy sins be forgiven thee. Or to say, arise, take up thy bed, and walk. Look at verse 10. In verse 10, but they, that ye may know that the Son of Man, that's Christ, has power on earth to forgive sin has power did you hear that not just in jerusalem not just in nazareth not just in capernaum he has power on earth he has power in yola he has power everywhere in adamawa state 
He has power all over the northeast of Nigeria. He has power all over Nigeria. The power of Christ is not limited to Jerusalem, Nazareth, or Capernaum. Look at the word because he has power on earth to forgive sins anywhere you are. As you call on the name of the Lord tonight, your sins will be forgiven in Jesus' name. He said to the sick of the palsy, look at verse 11, in verse 11, I say unto thee, arise, take up thy bed. Remember, they carried that man there. Remember, it took four people to carry him there. And now Jesus said, arise, take up thy bed. Go thy way into thine house. Look at verse 12 and immediately. Tell your neighbor there immediately. <laughs> Say it very well. Now, look at them. Don't put your eyes down. If whatever challenge they have, look at them very well and shout immediately. That's how your forgiveness will come tonight. That's how your salvation will come tonight. That's how your healing will come tonight. Immediately he arose and took up his bed and went forth before them all. He didn't sneak out at the back door. He came, he said, look at me, I can walk. I can see. I can bend. I can straighten up. I can hear today you come before the people and you show what Christ is mighty to do. Mighty to heal. Mighty to deliver. And mighty to set free. He walked before them all and they were all amazed and glorified God saying, We never saw it on this fashion. What you have never seen in your personal life. Miracle, salvation, deliverance, redemption that you have never experienced in your life tonight, it will come to you. Look at number two there. Number two is the mighty works of the conqueror, our healer. The mighty works of the conqueror, our healer. Everything about Christ, mighty. Think about that. Conception. Without Mary knowing Joseph intimately. Conception. That one, miraculous and mighty. And the birth of Jesus Christ, miraculous and mighty. And the preservation of the life of Christ, when Herod wanted to kill him and all the children, they escaped, miraculous and mighty. And then everywhere he went, when he went to Capernaum, mighty things, Nazareth, mighty things, Jerusalem, mighty things, Yola, for you there, mighty. online, mighty. over the radio, over the television. Congratulations tonight. You are face to face with the mighty works of the conqueror, our healer, in Jesus' name. See Luke chapter 19. Luke chapter 19, reading from verse 37. It says, And when he was come, nice, even now, at the descent of the Mount of Olives. It says, the whole multitude, like we're here tonight, of the disciples began to rejoice and to praise God with a loud voice. Why? For all the mighty works that they had seen. They were praising God. They said, we never saw anything like this before. And none of the prophets of the Old Testament ever did anything like this before. Look at them. Blind eyes opening. 
the lame walking the maimed some parts of the body that have been chopped off or cut off growing back again those things are back here in the name of jesus yeah. praising god for all the mighty works that they had seen look at verse 38 in verse 38 saying blessed be the king that comes in the name of the lord peace in heaven and on earth and glory in the highest peace has come from heaven to your soul to your spirit you know when we get the salvation of the lord the turbulence in our mind the condemnation in our mind the confusion in our mind the shame in our mind why am i doing that why am i why can't i straighten up why can't i live a proper life a good life a positive life why can't i live a righteous life all those uh, areas of sorrow and regret and then there's no peace there is no peace says the lord to the wicked but then christ the prince of peace will come to your heart and then all the confusion and all the doubt and all the fears the fears of the future the fear of hell the fear of eternal suffering Christ will come in he'll take that away from your heart and he will give you peace on earth that will take you to the peace of heaven and glory from the highest look at Matthew chapter 8 we're looking at verse 16 Matthew chapter 8 reading from verse 16 says when the evening was come they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils and he cast out the spirits with his word and healed all how many did he heal as you are here tonight, how many will he heal? Oh. Will he get to you? Yeah. Healing, it will get to you. Yeah. Whatever your sickness, whatever, whatever your ailment, the disease and the infirmity, whatever, it will come to you tonight in Jesus' name. And it says, and he cast out the spirits with his word and healed all that was sick. Look at verse 17 that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet saying himself took our infirmities and bear our sicknesses himself took our infirmities and bear our sicknesses he is looking at a sickness like a load a load to bear a load to carry a load to lead now if you have a load you couldn't uh, carry and you want to take the load from here you want to go and dump it in the sea so that it will be totally forgotten but you try the thing is there you cannot do it then you call somebody you say please whatever it will take help me carry this and i'll pay whatever price your name and the fellow says where is the load you have to show him he's not going to carry the whole house you need to show him what that load is and then that man will carry the load you'll not see that load anymore then he'll dump it in the sea of god's forgetfulness and sink to the bottom and never show up never come back to you and then you say how about the payment and you said don't worry he paid it all for you christ has paid the price to carry your load of sickness your load of infirmity but you have to tell him where is the load that's why we say touch the place where you have the problem where is the sickness touch the place where you have the suffering and when you touch it and you raise up there and you say i'm here i have a load of sickness a load of infirmity you're going to carry for me he'll come there he'll carry it away for you 
he's done it for other people what well, were in uh, you know the crusade you know we've been having this crusade now for you know from place to place and this is the time of your life and he carried the sicknesses in other places. Now Eula is going to carry our sicknesses away. Yeah. There, there is a, there's a sister, Mrs. Endurance. And she was healed. Pal, terrible. That she had, that almost killed her. Until Christ came and carried it away. He did it for her, for Mrs. Endurance. And your turn has now come. Yeah. Listen to Mrs. Endurance and see how the Lord carried it away. My name is Endurance Odido. I have two problems in my life. One is spy, one is issue of blood. And when the GCK happened to be online, I now said, told my husband that through the GCK I will be healed. And I went to the GCK. When the man of God, WF Kumu, you say, where you have that issue? Raise your hand up, one hand up, one hand down to that place. So I did so. Immediately after the last amen, I feel something inside me. So when I got home, I confirmed that the pile entered in back as not before I cannot sit down, before I cannot stay where people is because of the issue of blood. But so God be the glory. Through the GCK, I was healed. I am free now for what God has done for me. Through WF Kumuyi, I thank the Lord, Almighty God. For using him to make me get my freedom. Amen. And tonight you will get your freedom. Amen. There's another sister, Mrs. Favor, and uh, she was delivered. She'll tell you her story herself. Mrs. Favor, you can tell us the story. My name is Deborah Momo. I was having uh, pains in my heart over 21 years. So I've been visiting many hospitals. The last one I went, the uh, endoscope lab that did me said that I have hole in the heart, which had been disturbing me. It caused me a lot of things. I cannot do any strong thing. The case of the woman with hole in the heart, yes, it's one of the uh, septa, either atrial or ventricular septa diseases. Usually a congenital kind of disease, sometimes it can manifest in adults. It could lead to death, actually, and it makes life very uncomfortable to the patient. But I've been praying, breathing God, that one day, God will see me through. On December 2021, during GCK, with our WF Kumoi, God now remembered me. So after the prayer of man of God, I didn't remember it again. So as, uh, as I, I, I was preparing for December retreat that year, one spirit now said, how about that problem? I begin to look for it. I do not see it again. Like now, I can jump up. So I want to thank God who delivered me. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The Lord will deliver you. Amen. God is not partial. And his strength is always there. And whenever we call on the name of Jesus, the same yesterday, today, and forever, he will deliver you. Amen. Number three here is the mighty wonders of the captain, our deliverer. The mighty wonders of our captain, our deliverer. Wonders in your life tonight. The wonder of salvation. The wonder of healing. The wonder of deliverance. It is you tonight that the Lord miraculously is going to touch you will never be the same again yeah. amen look at Hebrews chapter 2 and I'm reading from verse 10 Hebrews chapter 2 we're looking at verse 10 
for it became him. For whom are all things, and by whom are all things, in bringing many sons unto glory. Bringing many sons unto glory. As you offer yourself tonight, and you say, yes, I'll be a son for glory. I'll be a daughter for glory. It'll take you whatever the past, whatever the history, whatever you have left behind, however deep, however defiled, however shameful, it'll get you out of that shame. It'll bring you to glory. Amen. I said it'll bring you to glory. Amen. It says in bringing many, not a few, not just some, um, you know, local people there, everywhere. He'll bring many multitudes to glory to make the captain, uh, then to make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering. Look at verse 14. In verse 14, for as much then, as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself. Likewise, to part of the same that he through death might destroy him that had the power of death, that he is the devil. The death of Christ on the cross of Calvary dealt a deafening, deadly blow on the devil. He will pack his load from your life tonight and go away. Look at verse 14. In verse 14, sorry, verse 15, it says, And delivered them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. All your lifetime. Whatever you have been subjected to, the Lord will break the yoke tonight. It will untie the chain tonight. It will remove the cord tonight. And once again, you will say, I am free. Can you say that? I am free. In your soul, you'll be free. In every part of your body, you know, the hand is hanging down like that because of stroke. And you're not free to lift it up. You'll be free. you lift it up in Jesus' name. The legs are not free. If you're trying to walk, it will be crossing one to the other. But now freedom has come for your legs. And the waist, you couldn't get up. And if you were going to bend down, it's with real, real pain. But now, it will set you free tonight. And then you didn't have joy. If you want to, if you open your mouth, you want to talk, you'll be crying. You'll be crying. In this life, I'm a big sinner. I don't know whether God can ever forgive me. I've been rejected. Other people look at me and say, if I'm so bad, I'm so dirty. But tonight, it'll set you free. Yeah. It will cleanse your heart. It will save your soul. It will turn your life around. If you never smiled before tonight, a smile from heaven is coming upon your face. And laughter, joy is coming in your life. Life will be totally different from tonight in Jesus' name. I want it. I want it. Colossians chapter 1 verse 13. In Colossians chapter 1 verse 13, it said, Who has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son? He said, that place of condemnation, that's not good for you to be there. He translates you to the kingdom of his dear son. That dungeon of darkness where there's doubt, where there's despair, where there's depression, it's not good for you to be there. He'll pick you up. He will translate you to the kingdom of his dear son. That place where you're in prison with guilt and condemnation, and you're always sorrowful, you're always guilty, and you're always perplexed. The Lord says it's not good for you to be there. Tonight, he'll pick you up. Tonight, he'll take you away from there. Darkness, gone. Condemnation, gone. 
and all the shame of the past life tonight gone and the oppression of the devil tonight gone it will take you out of that darkness and you come to the kingdom of his dear son look at verse 14 in verse 14 in whom we have redemption through his blood even the forgiveness of sins it will erase all the sins you ever committed there'll be no record of that sin on earth no record of that sin in heaven and your new name Christ's name will enter into the book of life in heaven Amen. do you want that do you want to be in the kingdom of his dear son do you want to have the joy of salvation do you want to have the freedom that comes with forgiveness i say do you want do you desire and do you want it now 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 it's bowed and eyes closed it's bowed and eyes closed he wants to forgive you right now he wants to take you out of the condemnation out of the guilt he wants to bring you to the kingdom of his dear son wherever you are you raise up your hand you say lord i want you to forgive me i want you to set me free i want you to translate me to the kingdom of your dear son raise up that hand god bless you there god bless you god bless you there thank you very much god bless you there if you're raising up your hand you stand up you say i want forgiveness i want to be translated out of my guilt out of my condemnation i want to come to the freedom and the forgiveness of the lord raise up your hand online raise up your hand over the social media wherever you are raise up your hand anywhere you are now forgiveness is coming salvation is coming freedom is coming raise up that hand if you're raising up your hand please stand up to identify yourself i am the man i am the woman i am the boy i am the girl i am the person i want to be translated out of disgrace and i want to come into the kingdom of god so that i'm translated out of my guilt and i come to have the salvation forgiveness redemption of the lord please stand up anywhere you are we're praying together now for that work of grace salvation to be effected in your life Raise up the hand, God bless you there. And stand up wherever you are. This is the moment to be translated into the glory, the realm of the glory of God. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you for your word, word of salvation that cannot fail. The word of forgiveness that cannot fail. The word of redemption that cannot fail. All these have indicated they have heard your word and the word has brought faith in their hearts lord i pray bring forgiveness to everyone in jesus name take their guilt away take their condemnation away write their names in the book of life and let your spirit bear witness with their spirit with their heart now they are children of god now their sins are forgiven now they have the salvation of the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. It is done. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. Keep on standing. Our counselors are there. And uh, they will give you slips to fill. We want to have all those records so that we can be of further help to you to get you established in the kingdom of Christ that you have come to now we we'll call on our moderating overseer tonight to help us in this session of counseling congratulations you are welcome into the kingdom of god you have made the best decision in your life today 
as our Father and the Lord have said, there are people that will give you slips now, fill them properly, so that you will be able of further help to you. Let all our counselors spread all over, including very far back. There are some people far at the back in the dark there, close to the very far back of this auditorium. Attend to all of them, even at the gate. If you are watching online, and you gave your life to Christ after the pastor's message this just very evening. There is a link that is below your screen. You just click on that link and fill the form so that we can assist you further in your new walk with Christ. Those who are listening also through the radio or television, and you have just given your life to Christ, you can send your name, your, your phone number as well as your location, as I will give you this WhatsApp number plus two, three, four, nine, one, five, four, 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 nine, two, six, three. I take that again, plus two, three, four, nine, one, five, four, 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 nine, two, six, three. There will be a special meeting, lunch hour, with Jesus, for all those who gave their lives this evening, tomorrow, right in the auditorium in front of me, the time is 3 p.m. Avail yourself to be present because there will be a package that will be given to you, direct from our Father in the Lord, which will be of great help to you, and also, we will be able to help you Father, our counselors, when you are through with the with your own section, you can indicate by waving the flags that are given to you or your hand, so that I can be able to know you are true. This is because our Father in the Lord is still coming back to pray for us. As he has said, great miracles are going to take place tonight. Those of us that are sitting down, we should be praying, believing God also for our miracles because the Lord is waiting to unleash compound miracles upon us tonight. I say compound miracles upon us tonight. So be excited, be ready, be praying because for the past four days, you have seen that the miracles have been increasing every day. And tonight, there is going to be galore of miracles. Our counselors, let's make sure that when we are through, you give me an indication. Please, those that are at the far back, let's make sure when we finish also, you will come back. And then we want all those that have come with people with problems, you will stand by the people you brought, and you will be encouraging them to follow as the man of God 
will be ministering and will also be telling us what to do. Let's obey, and the Lord will confirm his word in your lives in Jesus' name. And our counselors too, you can help the people. You may not need to come back, but stand by them and help them as the miracle prayer will be going on to encourage them. And as we know, great miracles will take place as soon as the last amen is done, God will confirm his word and will, bring, will start bringing them to be interviewed for their testimonies. Our counselors, those in the hall directly in front of me, are you through? If you are through, can you wave at me? What are by my right hand side? Hall three. All right, please let's hurry up, even though we should write it clearly, get the details so that we'll be able to trace the people. Remember, those of us sitting down, let's be praying, believing God, meditating, expecting, as the Lord will visit us. Yes, our counselors. Those in the middle, are you through now? Can you wave at me, they are leaders, if you are true? Out of all three, and those at the extreme there, are we true? I cannot see you. If you are true, can you wave? Okay, those in the main hall, they are true. What are those by this side? By my right, are we true? Okay. Thank you very much. Let's get ready for our miracles. Our Father in the Lord is coming now. Be ready to receive. Welcome, sir. Praise the Lord. I am ready to receive. It will come. It's coming your way in Jesus' name. Once again, you raise up your hand, you identify yourself in the cage. I need a healing. I need deliverance. There is this sickness, this infirmity, this disease. I want the Lord to come instantaneously and carry everything away and bear everything away. And he will do it. So you raise up one hand and you lay the other hand where you have the challenge. Once we mention the name of Jesus, at the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee has to bow. Amen. That sickness will bow and go out. Amen. Father, in Jesus' name, Amen. we thank you for your mighty word. 
mighty works and mighty wonders. We've heard your word. Faith is burst in us. And we know faith will never fail. Therefore, Lord, we bring all our problems, all our challenges, all our sicknesses, all our infirmities, all the oppression, all the depression. We bring everything before you now. Lord Jesus, our healer, our deliverer, carry everything away in Jesus' name. Pain, go out. Suffering, go out. Depression, go out. Insanity, go out. Tuberculosis, go out. Cancer, be healed. Ulcer, be healed. HIV, AIDS, be healed. Paralysis, be healed. Blind eyes, be healed. Deafness, dumbness, be healed. And every swelling to come out of everyone in Jesus' name. Lord, confirm the miracle. Confirm the healing. Confirm the deliverance in everyone right now. Here in Yola, there online, in every state in our country, Nigeria, all the countries of Africa, outside Africa, everywhere, receive your healing now in Jesus' name. It is done. It is done. Thank you, Lord, for the confirmation. In Jesus' name we pray. Take up yourself, your healing, your deliverance, your miracle is there. Uh, moderate chin overseer now.